Hi and welcome. So today we are going to talk about a, uh, a disease that is being more frequently diagnosed and that is uh, diabetes. And there are three types. So Joel, what can you tell us about diabetes and its incidence in the world? Okay, so basically we're st starting to see the uh, disease of diabetes more uh, frequently. It's being diagnosed more. Um, the figures I saw last were one in 11 adults in the entire world have diabetes. Um, here in the United States, it's estimated around 50% of adults have uh, uh, diabetes and close to 25% in adolescents. So it's a, it's a disease that we're seeing more frequently and it's concerning because we're starting to now see the adolescents uh, being diagnosed with diabetes. Yes, this disease is no longer an older population disease as it had been known years ago. We are seeing children being diagnosed at younger age, mm -hmm. um, again, more frequently than we had in other, um, you know, it years past. So um, it's kind of unfortunate that we're seeing this um, and a lot of it, as we will discuss, um, has to do with our lifestyle, the right? Main, main part. Uh, we once thought, uh, or I uh, thought that it was a, a genetic component, but actually about 90% of diabetes is basically our lifestyle. It's, it's, our, it's uh, the, the foods that we're eating, really. Yeah. Uh, and there's three types of diabetes. Diabetes type one, type two, and gestational. And they all deal with insulin, uh, the hormone insulin. Uh, in type one, basically, you're, for various reasons, your pancreas just doesn't produce it. Uh, and, as, and as I've heard, heard of the type one, it could be autoimmune, right? So it's autoimmune, yeah. um, and it can happen maybe in vitro, and then at, obviously as a result, as once you're born, you can... Yeah, so various theories that, uh, that, uh, that are thought to cause type 1, but basically your pancreas doesn't uh, secrete any more insulin. And, but the other two, uh, basically type 2 and gestational, just have to do with insulin resistance. That's the main, main uh, problem with uh, diabetes. And again, this is not a condition, an unknown type of thing. Uh, it's not like uh, diabetes, we don't understand why it happens just basically it's insulin resistance and it's right. being caused by our foods specifically sugar right and so as as we share this information and we maybe just specifically talk about type 2 diabetes mm -hmm. um obviously you kind of gave us already the incidence on mm -hmm. on the figures on how many people are being diagnosed per year um but what happens inside our body that you know that leads us to, you know, being diagnosed or leads us to mm -hmm. getting this uh, chronic disease. So basically, you know, there's a couple of thoughts about how it happens, but the main thing is sugar. Whenever you consume something, uh, you know, that's made of sugar or even carbohydrates that break down into sugar, it causes your pancreas to secrete insulin, and you need that insulin to grab the sugar because the sugar in your blood is is, is poison. Mm -hmm. You need to get it out of the system if you're not going to use it right away, whether in your muscles or or, or in your brain. Um, so basically, every time that you're having sugar, you're spiking your insulin up, and what ends up happening is, in that the cellular level, to make it simple, is you become resistant. No longer will that insulin go in with the sugar because it's now resistant. So right. basically, the, it's insulin resistance, and it's being caused by our foods. And basically, I want the audience to know that this is not a, a, a disease that, that 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 cannot be cured. It could definitely be cured and and, it, and I, prevent it and because prevent really it. honestly the goal is that let's prevent it let's avoid even having to get to that point um again by our lifestyle so so it's definitely preventable no, and preventable. if we have it as you mm -hmm. said then let's treat it yeah no basically with what's concerning is the standard american diet it, it, it asks us on the food pyramid to have about you know, what four to six yeah. servings of, yeah. of, of whole grains and and, and bread and that's just too much we're not a uh, humans were not made to be consuming that much sugar Correct. so that's the problem because of that diet the diet now that we have along with processed foods basically is what it is our sugar it's just all day long sugar and the pancreas has to uh, secrete the insulin secrete it so we're constantly over using the pancreas for it to release constantly right Absolutely. and then we're having to eat so frequently when that is also not necessary to eat six times a day you know or mm -hmm. um so we're constantly um having that pan yeah. pancreas um you know uh, 
deliver. Yeah, and there's various reasons why that happens. I won't get into too much detail, but basically it's a, it's a resistance of a hormone called leptin, which in some blocks, and just basically carb sugar makes you want yeah. more and more and more sugar. And then the lack of inactivity. So our lifestyle mm -hmm. and the lack of inactivity are two main components of mm -hmm why we have such a high incidence of diabetes. So. Correct. So basically what happens is when you exercise, your muscles need to use sugar. Correct. If you're not exercising, your muscles don't use the sugar. So when you consume carbohydrates, your body is not going to store them in your muscles because your body knows uh, you're not exercising. Your body is smart. With so sugar. let's let's compare just briefly that in our body we have blood vessels right mm -hmm. um, and think of these blood vessels as our streets our roads our highways mm -hmm. it we hate driving in traffic right so nobody wants a backed up highway or or street so the analogy is think of your blood vessels exactly as that the more sugars we consume, and these could be simple or complex carbohydrates, it doesn't matter, they are going to get uh, utilized or broken down in your body the same way as glucose, because that's what your body tr uh, um, transfers them to, uh -huh. so they could be utilized as energy in your cool. body. So the more of that that is built up inside our blood vessels, so think now we're starting to back up that freeway, that those roads, and we don't have enough of this insulin or it's not being utilized correctly. So we need those exits, right? In this case, it's like the lock and key that we need um, for the insulin uh, in order for it to utilize and make our roads less congested. Um, so that buildup, that excess buildup is what's causing that. But when our insulin gets overshot mm -hmm. um, and we're becoming resistant, Correct. What happens in that moment? Well, at that point in time, then you got to get rid of the sugar some way. Um, now, it, the damage can be done in end organ damage in the small capillaries of your eyes. That's why it leads to blindness. Yeah. Uh, in your uh, in your extremities, um, you start to have uh, damage there, so that's why you can see amputations. Obviously, in your vessels, your coronary arteries start to clog up as well, and you see heart attacks. Right. So basically, when you're resistant at that point, you consume something with sugar, the insulin grabs it, and it can't get into the cell because there's resistance. So what happens, a lot of it goes out through your urine, and it starts to damage also your kidneys. So although it may seem like, yes, we need these sugars because that's what gives us energy, and that's true, mm -hmm. we, we kind of need it, but we get that stuff, our body's so smart that it breaks down, you know, proteins as well and utilizes them as, as um, uh, glucose as well. But if it's not being properly properly utilized, then we're going to store it, and then this is that built up Absolutely. that we get, right? Too, too much sugar, basically, your body will say we don't need all this, uh, so this, it starts to store away as an adipose tissue or fat tissue. But it gets a point in time where the fat cell it just does it can't hold any more sugar and it, it says it closes the door no more we don't need any more sugar here so there's no other uh, alternative. so it can overwork as much as it wants and bad things going to happen correct yeah and that's the problem with having insulin uh, levels so high so you mentioned something about adipose tissue so mm -hmm. for those wondering if we have um a higher so if sometimes we see individuals with you know most of their fat concentrated in their bellies right mm -hmm. that's almost a certain and kind of indication that there is diabetes or insulin resistance Absolutely. metabolic syndrome as we'd like to call it um, in that individual because it that the the fat is concentrated in, in the, the belly abdomen. in and the it, abdomen and it's mm -hmm. mainly visceral fat Correct. so that's where the problem is when you have so much sugar it goes to the liver it causes fatty liver which uh, another cascade of, of reactions leading to insulin resistance. So the more you know, the, the uh, your waist circumference is um, greater, the more likely you are insulin resistant. So as we've mentioned before, you know this doesn't happen by we're we're not necessarily overweight or fat because of the fat we're consuming. Of course, there are some that we need to avoid and we've already talked about that. Right. No. But it's mostly because of the excess carbohydrates the sugar, and yeah. the sugars, that's right? The sugars and, our and, the carbohydrates. Food. and uh, that's why uh, we see a, a big problem in, in obesity as well yeah. here, here in this country. And we're starting to see it all around the world. Yeah, so it's, it's unfortunately, it's very common. 
Um, I do want to leave you guys with some of the symptoms um, that mo most people experience. A lot of people don't realize or pair the some of these symptoms with the fact that maybe they are experiencing di diabetic symptoms or pre-diabetic symptoms. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is frequent urination, having to get up in the middle of the night. If that's not typical for you, then that is a sign to you know be a little concerned about. Frequent headaches or migraines, That's those are usually the first two that kind of come about. Um, if you're really not in tune with your body, some of these things will probably go unnoticed and you're like, oh, well, I've suffered with these all you know for my entire life. Which that means that you've probably been a little pre-diabetic or insulin resistant for quite some time. Um, so headaches, uh, frequent urination, the blurred vision is another one. So unfortunately, some of these symptoms, if you've already allowed them to go for, on for so long, Why you choose to they've already, yeah. they've already um, damaged, yeah, you know, they've create, created some damage. Um, dry skin is another mm -hmm. sign that's very typical. Um, uh, wounds that don't heal they become maybe like almost like ulcers right um, and then they go into this neuropathy situation that you mentioned where sometimes again remember these highways are our blood vessels and if we're not getting blood flown you know into all parts of our body well we're not getting good circulation right and the the furthest part from our heart um, that's pumping that blood are our feet and our toes so sometimes again we go into these um, these symptoms or these situations or um, uh, complications due to um, the the untreated um, diabetes so anything any other symptoms that I may have missed um, the mm, you got um, most of the common ones the um, the excessive hunger you said uh, excessive excessive hunger, yeah excessive thirst excessive hunger are mm. also um, part of that. Um, and again, I, I think we need to differentiate that just because you're getting that symptom of eating doesn't mean you have to eat the wrong food <laughs> as you're, uh, you know, if you're dealing with a diabetic, um, you know, symptom. Um, but again, get it, get it looked at, get it tested. So what can we do to get it, te to get tested? Just go to your doctor and uh, they're going to order a, um, several exams. Um, uh, Comprehensive metabolic panel will check to see your fasting uh, sugar and see what it is. Hemoglobin A1C will give you a, a, an, an estimate, an average of your blood sugars uh, for three months, the past three months. But some doctors are not checking for one important thing, and that's fasting insulin or a C-peptide. That starts to be effective even 10 to 14 years before the actual diagnosis of wow. diabetes. So that's the one we need to start checking more uh, if you're not if your medical provider doctor is not checking because you can have a normal uh, fasting uh, blood sugar and uh, you can even have a hemoglobin A1C that's um, is not showing anything but your fasting insulin will be telling you that you are consuming too much sugar and you're on your way to those conditions and where should our A1C be at hemoglobin A1C mm -hmm. uh, the, the standard uh, is 5.6 uh, or less mm -hmm. Um, some medical providers say they want you to be below 5.4, so actually it's better to be below 5.4 or, mm -hmm. or lower. But uh, if you are at 5.7 and up, you're pre-diabetic, and then if you're at 6.5 and up, you are considered now diabetic. And if you have any of these other risk factors, you have high blood pressure, you have high cholesterol, you're a smoker, all of these things add to the, you know, incidence rate of developing diabetes. So um, it's best to control all of these. Unfortunately, all these risk factors, all these chronic diseases kind of, you know, work together negatively for us. So the, you know, the more um, aware we are of, you know, what we're doing with our lifestyle, with what we're eating um, and, going to our doctor and making sure that all these, you know, labs are Inside, within, yeah. you know, range, then it gives us like an upper hand in preventing and or controlling if we're getting closer to those ranges that, you know, you mentioned. Correct. Anything else you'd like to leave the audience with? No, just with I just need them to know that this is a condition that can definitely be in remission or you can Absolutely. not be any more diabetic or pre-diabetic. It's just having to change a couple of things with uh, your, uh, 
your foods. Yeah, it's again, this is preventable. It's Correct. treatable. Treatable as well. Um, we didn't really get into um, medications. We will have another video with a little bit more detail on that. We just wanted this to be really quick and simple, but it is preventable. It is treatable. Change your lifestyle. Get out and do some kind of activity, you know, and it could be inside your house, um, it, whatever it is that you want to do. But you know get active and change your lifestyle um, eliminate those processed foods and the excess carbohydrates um, be aware be very um, mindful of your body and the symptoms because our body talks to us so start paying attention a little bit more to how you're feeling um, if you are a diabetic already and have children make those changes now so that your kids also um, do not get uh, diagnosed with, with diabetes or any of the other chronic diseases that we've talked about thus far. So thank you. And we will see you guys here um, to talk a little bit more into depth about the uh, diabetes, um, maybe other symptoms, but definitely medications. So thanks for watching.